It's lightning in a bottle. It's the quickening. Mm, this yeah. movie is the quickening. It shouldn't work, but it does. So how do you plan on duplicating that? Yeah, something that should have never worked to begin with. Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten's VHS Tales. Yeah. I think it's our first of the year. Today we're going to be talking about 1986's Highlander. And this one is a request from Peter Paleocastritis. And he requested this actually last year. And we feel bad we didn't get to it right away because we actually wanted to do something a little special for this episode. Special. Very. Very special. Very special, boy. <laughs> and but we have to shoot it in the summer. Yeah. Is the thing, and we didn't get to it last summer just because things didn't work out. So now we're gonna get to Highlander with our little <laughs> special thing we have planned that you'll see later on in this episode. But he wanted us to talk about our feelings and our memories of Highlander. Honestly, it's a movie that I don't think we got into until a bit later in life. Like, it wasn't one of those movies I remember renting as a kid all the time. Yeah. Yeah, not really. No, like, I remember seeing it and liking it, but not being, like, obsessed with it. Even, like, when you look at the cover, too, like in the movie store, the cover's kind of shitty. Well, <laughs> there were so many different covers of Highlander as a thing, right? There were... <laughs> There's so many different VHS covers out there where if you happen to see this one where it's just Christopher Lambert with a sword, like, it's kind of... Yeah, it's like, what does that tell it's, you? It's not that enticing. We finally sat down and paid real attention to yeah. it. It did become, over time, one of our favorite movies. Yeah. We love Highlander. It, I think it's a fucking fantastic movie. But the funny thing about Highlander is on paper... It doesn't quite work, eh? When you look at it, right, it's like... It's, it's surprising that it actually turned into a great movie. You got this Frenchman playing a Scotsman. <laughs> horribly, I might add. <laughs> You're a liar! Scotsman playing an Egyptian. Yeah. Horribly. Yeah, yeah, still with a Scottish accent. <laughs> yeah. It's about being immortal and all this weird lore with there must be only two at the end that fight for the grand prize. Yeah, of what you don't know until the very end, right? Yeah, and it's, it's just a bizarre movie and you'd think it wouldn't work, but everything just fell into place. Yeah, yeah. Even the Queen soundtrack is kind of like... Yeah, it seems like it should be out of place for such a movie like this, right? Yeah. But it just works. Yeah. Like, even when he's in the bar drinking, like, One Year of Love plays, like, that's perfect yeah i don't know why but it just fucking works so highlander is totally one of those movies that it's just lightning in a bottle and it's like you can't replicate these certain things falling into place even clancy brown as kurgan because he had acted along with sting in the bride sting was buddies with the director i think sting got him the gig on highlander saying that no you hire this guy he's He's really good. He played Frankenstein in The Bride. I don't think they paid him for that role either. I read where they didn't pay him. What? <laughs> they didn't pay him. <laughs> so let's talk about why Highlander, even though it shouldn't work, it does work. First of all, it's a fantastic looking movie. Like right, right from the beginning of the movie where he has the first sword fight in the parking lot. If that doesn't get you invested in the movie, nothing will. And from there on, you're just always, it's, I think it's the pacing and the way they keep the, the viewer intrigued with, oh, who is this guy? It's structured in a very smart way to always keep you invested and interested in what's happening. The way they go back and forth, the past, and then that, that's how they explain Ramirez came into his life, you yeah. know, and started teaching him. And then they fast forward to the future about what he's dealing with, you know, and stuff like that. They do a great job of that. That's not easy to do. Even though the, the premise of the movie is pretty silly, you know, immortal and all mm -hmm. this stuff and fighting for the prize and the quickening and all this stuff. Like those flashbacks, like you mentioned, like they're done very realistic. Yeah. Like all the stuff in Scotland, it's like drab and dirty and it's yeah. not Hollywood. And you feel that it's like the medieval ages too, yeah. right? They do a great job of that. Yeah, and that, you know, all that stuff is to the film's benefit. The score, like the musical score, the, the you know, not this, the Queen songs, but mm -hmm. the actual musical score is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it underscores the movie perfectly. Sean Connery adding major star power to the movie too, right? Because yeah. everybody else is sort of, Christopher Lambert is one of his first major movies, right? So In it's America. Like, yeah, yeah. And so Sean Connery, they needed that. 
to really drive that movie. And they got it. Like, Sean Connery's performance is awesome. Yeah. It's, everybody's performance is great. Yeah, and it's funny, too, because, like, Christopher Lambert, such a weird performance in this where he's got this... Like, weird accent. Mm -hmm. Then why is that bald policeman sitting outside watching your apartment? Helps it because he's lived so long. Yeah. Where he's lived in all these different places over hundreds of years where his accent has become kind of jumbled a bit. Yeah, it doesn't really sound like it's from one place. And Christopher Lambert, well, that's what happened to him. As a kid, he moved a lot as a kid. Mm -hmm. So he had a jumbled accent because he moved around so much. So he kind of had that same life as McLeod. Lots of different places. You're cruising for a piece of ass. <laughs> <laughs> You're cruising for a piece of ass. It's a very quotable movie. It's got fantastic fight scenes. Yeah, that's the thing. The choreography is amazing in this. Yeah, it's got one of the best bad guys from the 80s. Yep, yeah, the Kurgan. It's just like we said, lightning in a bottle. Everything fell into place even though it kind of had so much against it. Yeah, and know? the movie didn't do very well at the box office either, right? And it just turned into more of a cult classic as the years went on. It kind of doesn't surprise me, I guess, because it is such a, an oddball movie. It is an oddball movie. It is like, it's like, it's funny because it's, it's not a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination, but in some ways it is perfect. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's weird. It, as far as being a cult classic movie, it is perfect. Yeah. It kind of checks all the boxes. It's like a definition of a cult classic, right? It, it really is. I really didn't get into the Highlander movies until like later, like mm -hmm. you said, and it wasn't until like where actually the VHS rental stores were converting the DVD and started blowing out all the VHS that I saw all the Highlander movies there like in a row. Yeah. And there was like buy two, get one free or whatever. And like, I'll just grab them all, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when I actually got immersed into the rest of the movies. And that's when I got you into collecting VHS as well. You must learn to conceal your tapes and harness your movies until the time of the gathering. The gathering? When only few of us are left, we'll feel an irresistible pull to a faraway convention to bid on the prize. Come on, Mosh! <laughs> what are you doing? Never lose your temper. If you blow the deal, it's over. But I thought we made a deal. Who? <gasps> Never overextend your bid. You're broke and paid too much for common tapes. If it came down to two of us, would you bid on my tapes? <laughs> Carl, please! We must collect till no tapes remain. We are only safe in the video stores. No one will violate that law. It's tradition. for the last. Feel the stack growing. The VCR rewinding. when we had hair and dressed like idiots. But yeah, it's like, you got the whole collection here. So you got first Highlander, then the second Highlander. Which, oh, which we're gonna touch on now. So the, the theme of this episode is gonna be, there should only be one. Yeah. There can be only one. Complete, utter, shit show up there regarded as one of the worst movies ever made it depends on how much you love the franchise because you can still give it a pass <laughs> it's like it's a, it's a tough movie to fucking get down man it's hard to watch because it's so fucking all over the place 
And like they're trying to explain like that they're aliens from that other planet and the plot in general is so absurd like so it takes place in the future block out the sun with that shield with that shield and then you also find out that all the immortals are aliens from the future and yeah and from a different planet and they're I mean, criminals like... and they've been banished to earth <laughs> in the past to fight like, <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, talk about a convoluted fucking movie. And talk about, like, a complete fucking 180 from the first one, right? Yeah. And then they introduce all this garbage into the second. It's like, what? To go from such a great movie like the first one to that. One of the only saving graces for the second one is Michael Ironside. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. Pretty good. And like, you know, Sean Connery returns, but it's completely throwaway. Yeah. He like dies right away. He comes <laughs> back for no reason just because he comes back. Yeah, because he's like summoned back or whatever. <laughs> like what? Like <laughs> he helps McCloud get into this compound. Yeah. And then he just lets himself die. Yeah, yeah. It's like he's <laughs> holding up that elevator yeah. thing or whatever. Like what the fuck? <laughs> it's like it's so throwaway. <laughs> it's even stupid in like the beginning of the movie where Christopher Lambert he's all old and everything. Yeah. And then there's all that all that lightning and shit, and then he's all young again. <laughs> like way to fucking gloss over that and all those cyberpunk guys yeah those, those on, gremlin on, those, on, the, on like the hoverboards <laughs> flying and it's like <laughs> like it looks great it's a fantastic looking movie like the design and everything's it but it's nonsensical oh. like if anything is nonsensical it's highlander too it's just a mess and it's also very confusing like movie because i remember like when i was getting into highlander and i'd go to movie stores and stuff and you'd see like different versions of Highlander too. Yeah. So you'd see the quickening and then you'd see like the renegade version and all these other different versions on the shelf. I'm like, well, what's the difference between all these? Ver Why are there so many different cuts of Highlander too? Mm -hmm. And I guess that's because the director hated the theatrical cut so much because a lot of his hand was forced in so many different directions. He came up with the renegade version. <laughs> Which isn't that much better, like not not really. Yeah, it's like like the structure is a little different as far as flashbacks go. But you still have the general movie yeah. as a whole. Yeah, and you can't polish a turd. Yeah, really. that, that's <laughs> exactly. the thing. So one thing the the Renegade version does is it tries to eliminate the fact that the mortals are aliens, mm -hmm. but they're still from the future. Yeah. But because he cuts <laughs> out any thing that relates to aliens. It cuts out a lot of stuff, so it's like, it's again, it's nonsensical. Oh, God. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Talk about yeah. one of the worst sequels ever. It's a great example of, like, the studio taking charge of things and just fucking everything up. Yeah. It's like, they had such a different, uh, like, the director had such a different view of what he wanted. Yeah. And maybe it still wouldn't have been as good, but I guarantee you it would have been better than this piece of garbage. Oh, God. <laughs> and so then the, you, you get Highlander 3, the Sorcerer, <laughs> which is basically Highlander 1 with a different <laughs> bad guy. His name is Kane. It's kind of weird because, like, you can't get worse than Highlander 2, but at least Highlander 2 is entertaining in its craziness uh, yeah and how bad it is and how off the wall it is and highlander 3 yeah it disregards the second one mm -hmm. but it's boring mm, right yeah it's fucking boring i can't remember the third one that much i watched it once and i was like well mario uh, van peebles is yeah, the, is yeah. The bad guy and <clears throat> that's basically it it's just another immortal that McCloud has to do battle with that doesn't advance the story whatsoever and then you got endgame <laughs> Highlander Endgame, which bridges the TV show with the movies. Yeah. Now the two McClouds, Duncan McCloud and Connor McCloud, join forces. The fact that there's two, there's not supposed to be two. Yeah, there's one. only supposed to be one. There should only be one. There can be only one. In this movie, again, it's like, fuck, it's like it feels like it takes forever to watch, and it's 
fucking slow. Slow and boring, and it's like, it doesn't need to be there. And the fact that there was a TV series is interesting too, like we didn't watch it. At that time, we weren't really into the whole Highlander thing that much, right? Enough to want to watch the show on it. How many times can you battle immortals yeah, before it starts to get boring? Well, and, right? and what's the ultimate purpose of it, Yeah, right? They already had... In the first one, they already wrapped everything up in the first movie. They wrapped it all up nice and tight. Yep. He's the last immortal, he has the prize, which is now mortality. Yeah, which why that's a prize, I don't know, but whatever. And then they wreck it in the second one that they're aliens. Yeah, and then they spend the rest of the series trying to fix all that shit, and then trying to fucking create a show, and trying to weave like trying to weave a story in there just so they can create a show to keep the franchise going yeah and it's like it should never happen and then there was a cartoon a highlander cartoon as well <laughs> that we never watched that takes place like i think it's in the future yeah Ugh. so it's just so convoluted and like if you look at the highlander timeline it's one of the most convoluted Ugh. fuck just like the second movie it's yeah. like oh my oh, god, god. <laughs> So, perfect example of why you only need the one movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the rest are just all a fucking disgrace. And now they're talking about Highlander remakes. Yeah. Again, how many times can you say it? There should only be one. There can be only one! How are you going to make... How are you going to add to this movie? What are you going to do that's any different or any better than this? I don't see it. I don't see how they're going to do it. And I don't see why they should do it. You can't cast it better. Nope. You can't write it better. You're never going to have a good band to do the music as well as Queen did that yeah. fits as well as it did. Yeah. And the score, the orchestral score is fantastic. It's like, like we said, it's lightning in a bottle. It's the quickening. Mm -hmm. This yeah. movie is the quickening. Yeah. And it shouldn't work, but it does. So how do you plan on duplicating that? Yeah, something that should have never worked to begin with. The people who like Highlander are the people who don't want to see a remake. So why make a remake? <laughs> you know, yeah. like that's that's the way I see it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like didn't that total recall Ugh. remake bomb? Because <laughs> yeah. no one wanted to see it. Like it's Yeah, well what's <laughs> why would you make a total recall remake? And why would you make a Highlander remake? <sighs> The movie does invoke a lot of nostalgia, though, too, right? The very beginning scene, like uh, the fabulous Freebirds. Yeah. Like when you're watching it, even like, you know, you put it on. I put it on like a few weeks back, and like that opening scene where they're wrestling, it's like, ah, you kind of feel at home. It's like that's what old WWF wrestling yeah. used to be like. It was really damn good, you know. The funny thing is, I'm gonna go on a bit of a nerd thing here, so. Madison Square Garden was WWF territory in the 80s. The Freebirds only wrestled for the WWF for like a very brief period of time before they got fired. Mm -hmm. They never wrestled for <laughs> WWF. This is just by chance. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's just chance. Just yeah. pure chance. It really is a time capsule. And then the movie yep. is about time. Nostalgic trip all the way around. Even for McLeod going back to the 1500s. Yeah. <laughs> It is. It's a fantastic movie. Can't be duplicated, can't be replicated. Yeah. And from what we've seen here, can't be sequeled either. Because... No, it's pretty tough. It's like it's a one-stop shop, this movie. <laughs> I like that scene where he's all... Drunk? <laughs> yeah, he's all drunk off that, bra off that brandy, yeah, and he's like fencing with that guy, he and he stabs him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's all laughing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that Christopher Lambert laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Mortal Kombat, he's always doing that. <laughs> yeah. You tell the studio, it's like, laugh more. <laughs> <laughs> the Amber the Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> he all looks like shit in that movie. You know the thing about the fourth one, he's all too old and everything? You're like, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to be immortal. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like super old in it. <laughs> they don't even touch on the fact that like any of that either uh, they just gloss over it so that's our thoughts on highlander and the franchise as a whole yep and until next time <laughs> keep drinking there can be only one
but don't drink only one. Tell me about tape collecting. It's like a whirlwind in my man cave. But if I concentrate, I know the prices people are going to charge all over the world. Presidents, diplomats, scientists. I can help them understand to accept less. <laughs> you never prepared me for that, you damned old booze hound. <laughs> Patience, Tate Perlanda. You have done well, but it will take time. There are generations buying and selling who are at one with all collectors. The contents of all man caves are yours to know. You have power beyond imagination. Use it well, my friend. Don't overpay for common tape.